Welcome, my history channel. In the annals of human history, wars have been fought against fellow men, nations, and ideologies. However, one war stands out. A war against nature, a war against emus. Yes, you heard it right. Emus, those large, flightless birds native to Australia. It may sound like a setup for a comedic skit, but in the year of 1932, this unlikely foe became the target of military operations in the land down under. The conflict now known as the Emu War was far from being a laughing matter for those involved. What could possibly lead to such an unusual confrontation, you may wonder? The answer lies in the economic hardship of the Great Depression. This global crisis hit Australian farmers particularly hard. To make matters worse, a migration of about 20,000 emus descended upon the wheat farms of Western Australia, drawn by the abundant food and water. The emus, in their simple pursuit of survival, wreaked havoc on the already struggling farms, consuming and trampling the crops, leaving the farmers in despair. The desperate farmers appealed to the Australian government for assistance, leading to the deployment of the military. It was thought that the soldiers, armed with machine guns no less, would quickly solve the emu problem. The government also saw a potential benefit in culling the emus. Their feathers could be used in hats for the light horsemen, a mounted infantry division. Little did they know they were about to engage in one of the most unusual wars in history. As the military prepared for the operation, the emus continued their march across the farms, oblivious to their impending doom. With the government's approval and the soldiers on standby, the stage was set for a conflict that would go down in history for its sheer peculiarity. And so the stage was set for one of the most peculiar wars in history, the Emu War. The Emu, Emus, these large flightless birds native to Australia, were the unsuspecting adversaries in this conflict. Emus, known for their speed, strength and unique appearance, are a defining symbol of the Australian outback. However, back in the 1930s, these birds were not just symbols, they were a real, tangible problem. The emu is a fascinating creature. Standing up to six feet tall and weighing in at nearly 100 pounds, they are the second largest living bird by height, right after their cousin, the ostrich. They are known for their long, powerful legs, which not only allow them to achieve impressive speeds of up to 30 miles per hour, but also serve as a formidable defense mechanism. One swift kick from an emu can fend off predators, or, in our case, an unsuspecting soldier. Now, you may be wondering, why on earth did these birds become a problem for the Australian farmers in the 1930s? Well, it all boils down to food and water. In the midst of the Great Depression, Western Australia was hit by a severe drought, which forced thousands of emus to migrate from the arid interior to the fertile farmlands in search of sustenance. This migration led to a drastic increase in the emu population in the farming regions. They stormed through crops, decimating fields of wheat, and left a trail of destruction in their wake. The damage was so extensive that the farmers were pushed to the brink of ruin, they were desperate for a solution, and that's when they turned to the government for help. But the government's solution was not what one might expect. Instead of providing financial aid or resources, they decided to wage a war. A war against the emus. Armed with machine guns and a determination to protect their livelihood, the farmers, backed by the military, took on the feathered foe. Thus, the emus unknowingly became the enemy of the Australian farmers, setting the stage for an unprecedented conflict. With the emus wreaking havoc on the crops, the desperate farmers turned to the military for help. It was an unusual request, to say the least. But the Australian government took the plight of the farmers seriously. The emus, though unwitting participants, were causing significant damage to the livelihoods of the people they had sworn to protect. Thus, in a decision that would go down in the annals of history, the government decided to wage war on the emus. The initial strategy was straightforward. The government saw the emus not as an enemy to be feared, but a pest to be eradicated. The military was therefore tasked with the mission of reducing the emu population to protect the farmers and their crops. A small contingent of soldiers was assembled, armed not with the sophisticated weaponry of modern warfare, but with machine guns. The idea was not to battle the emus, but to cull them, much like one might cull any other invasive species. The soldiers, many of whom had seen real battle, found themselves in a strange predicament. They had been trained to face human enemies, to strategize and outwit their opponents. 
The emus, however, offered a different kind of challenge. They were unpredictable, unorganized, and utterly oblivious to the concept of warfare. And yet their sheer numbers and the damage they were causing made them a formidable adversary. The deployment of the soldiers was met with a mixture of bemusement and relief. The farmers, desperate for any assistance, welcomed their presence. The general public, however, viewed the entire endeavor with a certain degree of skepticism. The idea of the military being used to control a bird population seemed outlandish, even laughable. And yet the government stood firm in its decision, believing that this was a necessary measure to protect the farmers and their crops. Armed with machine guns and a mission, the soldiers ventured into the outback, ready to face their feathered foes. Little did they know this would be a war unlike any other, a war that would be remembered for its uniqueness, its absurdity and its sheer improbability. As the soldiers took on the emus, they soon realized they had underestimated their adversary. It was not just another day on the battlefield. The soldiers were about to engage in a battle of a different kind, one against a feathered foe, one that would echo through the annals of history with a note of the bizarre. The initial encounters between the soldiers and the emus were like nothing they had ever experienced. The emus, with their tall, imposing stature and swift, running speed, proved to be a formidable force. The soldiers found themselves in a situation where their usual tactics were ineffective. The emus scattered at the sound of gunfire, disappearing into the vast Australian outback, leaving the soldiers shooting at shadows. The emu's speed was a significant challenge. These birds, capable of reaching speeds of up to 30 miles per hour, were not easy targets. The soldiers found themselves chasing fleeting shadows, their bullets barely grazing the swift creatures. The emus were not just fast, they were resilient. Even when hit, some of these feathered warriors managed to escape, vanishing into the wilderness. The scattering behavior of the emus further compounded the soldiers' difficulties. Unlike traditional opponents who would rally together, the emus scattered in all directions when approached. This lack of formation made it difficult for the soldiers to aim effectively. It seemed as if each emu was its own army fighting its own war. This was a war unlike any other. The soldiers trained for human adversaries found themselves outwitted by the cunning of the emus. Their usual strategies and tactics were rendered ineffective against these unexpected foes. The lessons learned on the battlefield were harsh and humbling. The soldiers were faced with a foe they had underestimated. They had walked into this battle thinking it would be an easy victory, but the emus had other plans. They were determined, resilient and surprisingly strategic. They were not just birds, they were warriors of the outback. The emus, it seemed, were not going down without a fight. The Battle of the Emu War had truly begun. Despite the initial setbacks, the Australian military was not ready to accept defeat. The early days of the Emu War had been fraught with challenges, but the Australian soldiers were far from giving up. They knew they had to adjust their approach if they were to have any hope of victory against their feathered foes. In a stroke of ingenuity, the military decided to mount one of their machine guns on a truck. This new strategy was designed to allow the soldiers to chase down the emus with greater speed and efficiency. However, the high-speed chases across the Australian outback were far from smooth. The rough terrain made for a bumpy ride and accurate shooting was near impossible. But the soldiers persisted and their determination began to pay off. Slowly but surely they started to make a dent in the emu population. With several successful operations reported, the military's morale was boosted and it seemed like they were finally gaining the upper hand. Meanwhile, the war was attracting a great deal of attention from the media. News of the unusual conflict spread far and wide, making headlines across the globe. Reporters flocked to the Australian outback eager to cover the bizarre war between man and bird. The coverage was a double-edged sword. On one hand, it turned the emu war into a spectacle, drawing international attention to the plight of the Australian farmers. On the other hand, it also painted the military in a somewhat ridiculous light as they struggled to contain the emu onslaught. Nevertheless, the soldiers remained undeterred. They continued their operations, adapting their strategies and learning from their past failures. Every day brought new challenges, but also new opportunities for victory. As the weeks rolled on, the war escalated. The emus proved to be a formidable adversary, but the Australian military was not about to back down. They were committed to their mission, and they were willing to do whatever it took to succeed. 
The emu war was now in full swing, with both sides showing no signs of backing down. The stage was set for a showdown and the world was watching with bated breath. It was clear that this was no ordinary conflict and its outcome was anything but certain. After weeks of pursuit, the decision to withdraw came not from the battlefield, but from the public and political pressure. The Emu War, an unusual chapter in Australia's history, was drawing to a close. In the final weeks, the soldiers, now weary of the chase and the relentless emus, found themselves under a different kind of attack. Not from the emus, but from the public. The media had caught wind of the war, and the public was not amused. Newspapers filled with headlines and cartoons lampooning the military's efforts against the emus. The public outcry was loud and clear. The emu war was a farcical waste of resources. On the political front, the government was under fire. The opposition seized upon the emu war as a symbol of the government's mismanagement and disregard for the plight of the farmers. The Minister of Defence was grilled in Parliament, forced to defend the decision to deploy the military against the emus. The pressure was mounting and the government was cornered. In response to the public and political outcry, the decision was made to withdraw the troops. The last bullet was fired, the last emu chased, and the soldiers packed up their gear. The military operation to control the emu population had ended, not with a bang, but with a whimper. The farmers were left to deal with the emus on their own their plight largely forgotten in the wake of the public and political furor. The emus, oblivious to the human drama that had unfolded, continued to roam the Australian outback, a reminder of the war that had been waged against them. The emu war had started as a mission to protect the farmers' crops from the emus, but it ended as a farce, a joke that was played out on a national stage. It was a war that was lost, not on the battlefield, but in the court of public opinion. And just like that, the war was over, but the emus had left their mark. In the aftermath of the emu war, the world was left scratching its head. A military operation against flightless birds had resulted in a stalemate, leaving the Australian outback echoing with the victorious calls of emus. But for the farmers, the battle was far from over. Their crops, their livelihoods remained under threat from the resilient emus. In response to the continued emu onslaught, the Australian government introduced a bounty system. This was no longer a war of bullets, but one of incentives. For every emu beak brought in, a bounty would be paid. This new approach proved more effective, with thousands of emus culled in the first six months alone, yet the emus persisted, their numbers seemingly undeterred by the farmers' efforts. The legacy of the Emu War, though steeped in the absurd, carries with it a weighty message. It serves as a stark reminder of the unpredictable power of nature and the ramifications of human interference in delicate ecosystems. It's a tale that resonates with the modern world as we grapple with the consequences of climate change and habitat destruction. Today, the Emu War is remembered with a mixture of bemusement and incredulity. It has been immortalized in popular culture, featuring in books, films, and even video games. It is a story told with a twinkle in the eye and a shake of the head, a peculiar chapter in Australia's history that continues to capture imaginations worldwide. Yet for those who lived it, the Emu War was a desperate struggle for survival, a testament to the resilience of both man and bird in the harsh Australian outback. It was a conflict born out of necessity, one that left an indelible mark on the land and its people. The Emu War serves as a stark reminder of the unpredictability of nature and the folly of underestimating one's adversary, no matter how unconventional they may be. Thank you for watching the video. Subscribe to the iHistory channel, like and share. Also, don't forget to activate the notification bell.